You got me for our opening matchup here at 152 pounds. We got Vince Buzakis of Wyoming Seminary and Jackson Joy of Wadsworth. Shake hands, here we go. Opening, opening match of the finals of the 2023 power. We got Vince Buzakis of Wyoming Seminary in the blue and white singlet, green ankle band. Second on Jackson Joy, Wadsworth in the red and black, red ankle band. Buzakis the top seed coming in here. He was a champ at this tournament as a freshman back in 2021. He gets it on the single leg. Going shin wizard, kicking towards the edge is Joy, but getting the far ankles, Buzakis just dives out and grabs it as they go out of bounds and take an early two to zero lead for Buzakis. Buzakis ranked number three in the country. The junior for Wyoming Sem. He was actually, he competed for Wyoming Seminary as a freshman before transferring to Notre Dame Green Pond last year. Won a double A PIAA state title for Notre Dame Green Pond. Made the change back to Wyoming Sem. So he gives Joy the escape. Well, Joy, the senior for Wadsworth out of Ohio, he's ranked number seventh in the country at 150 pounds. And he's headed to Cornell next year. It's going elbow off one side than the other is Buzakis. Joy was the three seed coming into the weekend. Took out the two seed Melvin Miller, who we see compete on mat number three. Buzakis looks to re-attack. That was a wild action. <laughs> Buzakis was just running Joy down towards the edge. And Joy able to fight it off as he goes 360, locked in the crotch on the line. With 53 to go in the first period, still two to one. Buzakis on his offense early. As I was saying, Joy taking out the two seed Melvin Miller, Bishop McCourt in the semis. That was a rematch of a quarterfinal from back at, uh, uh, excuse me, Super 32 in October that Miller was able to win he went on to win Super 32 while Joy took third. Joy got the better of him this time though. Joy was third at Ironman, or excuse me, fourth at Ironman a few weeks back at 150 pounds. Buzaka's getting to the legs. There's a stall warning as he comes up and drives him out of bounds with the underhook. That's Joy's first warning. I think that was warranted as he's taken him out of bounds a few times already. Buzakis won 150 pound title at Ironman. And Joy finished fourth. Just five seconds ago in the first period. And I'll do it for the first. Buzakis leads two to one. Joy also issued a stall warning. It's gonna be Buzakis' choice to start the second. He's gonna go down. From one side than the other is Joy, but Buzakis gets to his feet, able to hip heist out, earns his escape, make it three to one now early in the second period. A big point for Buzakis as Joy is really tough in the top position. But Buzakis got to his feet right away, didn't give Joy the opportunity to get to his stuff on top as he's really good at throwing in legs, going cross body ride. It's Joy bringing. Level changes now. Zakis on the pursuit once again, throwing in these shot fakes. Zakis was also a Fargo champion this past summer. Outside step attempt for Joy now out of the front headlock, re-attack for Buzakis. He's in on the single leg, looking to trip that far ankle. Joy's gonna be able to take it out of bounds with that whizzer. Yeah, just fixing the score up on the scoreboard in-house here. A little bit behind here on the scoreboard, but we're all right. We got it fixed up. It's three to one in favor of Buzakis here with a minute to go in the second period. Buzakis controlling the tie, taking Joy towards the edge once again. Looking to go elbow off with Joy. It's that little thumb block with Zox's left hand. Preventing Joy from coming inside or really getting anything going with that right hand. Ooh, Joy might have just caught a finger to the eye. 
Incidental. We're gonna take a, an additional five seconds off the clock from that first, as the clock wasn't running to start off the restart there earlier. So just 20 seconds to go in the second. Will be Joyce, Joyce in the third as Zox looks to go inside reach. Not able to get there. Shot by Buzaka's re-attack attempt by Joy, but Buzaka's able to keep square. Just five seconds to go. Gonna do it for period number two. Joy's choice to start the third. He's gonna go down. Joy still in this match, despite Buzaka's really controlling it thus far. Gets his escape here, make it three to two. See Buzakis looks to ride. Joy working up to his feet, putting those hands up. Buzakis gonna push him away. Make it three to two now. 150 to go in the third. Joy does have a stall warning. Uh, single leg attempt by Joy. Now Buzakis with the underhook working out of the front headlock. Now he's moving forward, push, takes Joy out once again. Just runs him straight out. No stall warning issue there. As Buzakis just ran him out with the underhook. Haven't seen Joy really get to an offensive attack so far. We'll see what his path to victory in his mind is. See if he picks his spot late or if he's gonna go to try to go get it right now. 105 to go in the third. Couldn't go one way than the other. Buzakis just down blocks it. Guys kind of wrist fighting in there with the left hand of Joy. Thumb block for, looking to go drag, then drops to the other side was Joy, but hasn't been able to get through this hand fight of Buzakis. Buzakis done a nice job controlling the tie as we go under 30 seconds to go. Hasn't really touched Buzakis' legs so far. Joy's got to st start putting things together now with under 20 to go. Going to start his sprint. He looks to go double leg now, another shot from space. Buzakis brings him up with the underhook. Just eight seconds on the clock. Joy's getting his feet moving. Now his headgear slides off. Just four seconds on the clock. We'll see if Joy tries to fire off the whistle here. Shot off the whistle one way and the other for Joy, but not able to get to the legs. And that's gonna do it. Vince Buzakis wins his second Powerade title as the junior for Wyoming Seminary. He's your 152 pound Powerade champion. I'm gonna go grab an interview with Vince Buzakis. You're gonna, Brock Heights gonna jump on the mic with you guys. Pounders on the mat. Alessio Parentin, Del Barton looking for the early takedown. He's in the green ankle band taking on Asher Cunningham of State College. It's Cunningham coming out with the early takedown. He's on the board 2 0. Parentin comes in ranked number eight in the country. That's up at 165 using the NFHS weight classes. A little bit different here in Pennsylvania as we go 152, 160. Asher Cunningham ranked at 157. He's number 14. Both are juniors. Parentin, a New Jersey state champion a year ago. He's fifth at Super 32. Committed to Cornell's Parentin. And he's a Powerade runner up a year ago. Cunningham, he's been eighth and fourth in the PIAA championships. Third at Ironman this year. King of the Mountain champion committed to wrestle at Penn State. 
2022, he was fifth as a power eight. What a weight class a year ago that Cunningham was in. That was a 145 pound weight class. Jaden Robinson won, Cam Catcher Bone runner up, Mac Church third, Vince Buzakis, who we just saw win a title, was fourth, Cunningham fifth, Nico Taddy was sixth. Cunningham working with the figure four leg ride on the right side, bar on the left. Inside one on one now with the right. Just 10 seconds remaining in the period. And Cunningham's gotta be careful with the over scissor there. Had the figure four leg ride, was hooked in the toe. You gotta apply pressure to the hyperextension to draw the penalty. Prenton chooses neutral to start the second. Fireman's carry attempt by Cunningham, shut down by Prenton. He's going to use that left side hook, throws it by, was looking to pancake, and right away, Coach Stoll says, cut them. They want to go up on their feet. They don't want this match to be wrestled down on the mat. Head lift position for Perrin, double ankle defense for Cunningham. He's trying to kick off, I guess that's to his left side. Wants to create a far ankle scramble. Win Dixie position, you see as he go takes the foot across in the armpit, but he's gonna slide off the side. Locks in the crotch, getting ready to cross the one minute mark in period number two. Perrin continuing to try to finish off this single leg. Wasn't quite able to step over the bottom leg as he's isolating. Cunningham trying to lock in the crotch and roll through. Now he finally does step over that right ankle of Cunningham. Brent taking the left foot off at a stalemate. I'll stop the action. He, he, you know, Prenton works so hard to get that bottom leg hooked. He finally does it, starts to work on the laces of the top foot, and you get the action shut down. It's kind of recognizing what are the key points here in order for a score to happen. And when you start to see some of those take place, yeah, I'd like to see the action go a little bit longer there. Prenton on the low ankle. Cunningham attacking the left knee, had it pulled up to his chest and had to readjust. He's going to go to far ankle. And with Prenton going. Put a half on the legs, had the foot crossed up. They're gonna talk about whether there was control prior to the period running out. Confirmed by the side judge. Cunningham's choice in the third. He's going underneath, he has the three two advantage. And right away, optional start shown by Parenton. escape given. 4-2 up on the board for Cunningham. Straight on single leg by Perrin, head lift position. Cunningham locked in the crotch. Perrin keeping his Feet down and away, working on that lock net. It's going to come to a reverse lock for Cunningham on the left leg. Prent trying to circle around the head to break the lock. A stalemate will stop the action with 1.15 to go in the belt. Side for Perrin Cunningham going to far ankle. Oh, 
Redden sitting him down on his hip. Has the legs locked. Takedown awarded for two. Coach stole verbal right away with Tren right on top of it. 50 seconds remaining in the bout. And I like how the decisions made immediately. They were ready for this scenario to play out. He picks up the takedown. They want to get the ride out to send this to sudden victory. Cunningham turning back in. Cross body ride going in for Perrin. They're up on their feet. Side headlock. And a Merkel for Cunningham picks up the reversal. Now with the leg coming out, Perrin's going to get the reversal back. I don't understand how it's not given. He still has red with a cross foot. I, there's no way this does not go sudden victory. Unbelievable. Cunningham's going to take the title 6-4. And Asher Cunningham over at Lesser L. Parenton. 6-4 decision. He's your Powerade champion. We're going to get a break for awards at 152. Tim Rice will be on the call. Number one versus number two, Gage Wright. We'll be taking on Ryan Burton of St. Joseph's Regional. One hundred and seventy two pound power raid final. We have Ryan Burton from St. Joseph's Regional in New Jersey. He's in the white and green, wearing the green ankle bands, fighting off a shot from Gage Wright. Gage Wright from Parkersburg, South West Virginia. Burton a junior, Wright a senior. Both of these guys are committed and heading to Virginia Tech. So two future teammates battling it out here at 172 pounds in the Powerade final. 
Ryan Burton, number one ranked wrestler in the country. Gage Wright, ranked number two. I'm Tim Rice, excited to be here with you this afternoon. As I'm sure the other guys inform you, we're going three-man finals here, and I'm looking forward to calling my first one here at 172 pounds, number one versus number two. Burton in on the attack, right with the whizzer. Now he transitions to a closed whizzer as Burton drops low on the ankle. See if he can shelf it on the outside leg. Minute gone so far here in the first period as Burton trying to scrape out with his knee and get that shelf to the far leg. Right, doing an excellent job in that closed whizzer position. Referee noticed we aren't going anywhere, so calls a stalemate with 46 seconds to go in the first period. Nice shot by Wright. Burton able to stop him. Has him buried underneath in the front headlock. See how aggressive he is from this position to try to go behind. Wright doing a good job squaring up. It's like Burton's trying to go ahead in the hole. Now Wright has that firm grip on the elbow. It's the second time these two have met this season. It's a rematch of the semifinals in the Beast of the East a few weeks ago. Burton was able to get a third period takedown and a ride out to win that match 5-4 over Gage Wright. But we're gonna end this first period scoreless. Some good action, but neither wrestler close to scoring points. As Burton won the toss, elected to defer to the third period, so Wright gets set up underneath. Taking a quick peek at the team scores, St. Joseph Regional, where is, that's Ryan Burton's home school. They're currently in fourth place in the team standings behind Malvern Prep in third, and that's a nice go behind by Wright. Gets the reversal on the switch, stays with it, and gets the two points. Burton tries to roll, grabs a foot. He's got Wright in some trouble now. So he loses the height, right still in control. With the arm across the back, goes for a roll. Very high risk from right, trying to roll through there. I would argue ill-advised, but able to come through and only gives up the escape for Burton. So, Gage right with the 2-1 lead. Is able to get the reversal to start the period and then gives up the escape to Burton. Again, Burton will have choice in the third. Gage Wright, it's a finalist last year, dropped his finals match up to Rocco Welsh, who is now wrestling at Ohio State. Wright was an Ironman champ this season. Ryan Burton, as I mentioned, number one ranked wrestler in the country, but he's been having to put in the work this tournament. 5-1 win in the quarterfinal round, 6-3 win in the semis. So he's been tested on his way here to the finals as we have under 10 seconds to go in the period. And again, it will be Burton's choice in the third where logically he would go underneath and try to tie this match up. Gage Wright also had a couple close matches himself. 9-3 winner in the quarterfinal round. And then a 4-1 win over Don Fenner from Wyoming Seminary. Guy who's ranked in the top 10, 10, 10, 10 in the country. So both these guys have been tested on their way to the final, but number one versus number two have both earned their trip here. As Wright has the legs in, looked like he was getting a little bit high, and Burton was trying to grab the head. We got a potentially dangerous situation. Couldn't see from our angle what was going on, but I'm sure that power half was getting cranked hard. And Ryan Burton welcomes the restart as he looks up at the clock. 1.41 to go in the period. Gets the 
it's a little high. Birdie able to drop down on a leg. Wright still in control. And Brent Burton probably does, probably does the wise thing. Clears ears out and gets, and gets his escape. So his score is tied. One point to go in the period. period. Looks like, Looks like the takedown is going to win this match. So as, so as I mentioned, B-Semis, B -semis, B -semis, Burton found himself, himself down by one in the third. He's able to get the takedown. We've got a tight score. We'll see if Burton can get that get closing, closing takedown. Take right, right is going to flip, flip the script. And come away with the win here in the Power Eight finals. finals. The semis, the semis right, had right had a real nice real double, double leg, leg at the end of the first period. Second seconds, seconds to go. Real, real finish on his double. double. See if he tries to fire something off that off. He's being a little, little bit more offensive here. Tries to get to the leg. leg. Right able to kick free. That was a good opportunity, good opportunity for Burton to score there on the edge. Right able to kick free. 30 seconds to go in a 2-2 match. Number one versus number two in the country. You'd like to see one of them go after it right now and earn it. And regulation. regulation. And there's and Wright firing right off from space. space. Goes to one goes leg. He's got his hand locked. Gets the, gets the rubber knee from Burton. Wright still right. in good still position, position to finish. Position. Scoops foot. Gets his hips down. He's going to have to show the referee a little bit more control. Good hold by the official. No control yet. And there's the takedown. Excellent job by the official. Got the takedown right at the buzzer. Great officiating, great wrestling. Gage Wright, your winner from Parkersburg South. Gage Wright, your Power 8 champion. guys wild finish to our 172 pound final we're gonna actually I believe do awards for the 160 pounders before headed to our 189 pound final so stay tuned just a couple minutes and we'll be back to action Going through our 160-pound 
Finishers on the podium over there right now. We will be continuing on here in just a moment with our 189 pound final. Back to action here, 189 pound final, the 2023 Powerade. We got Jake Daly out of Wyoming Seminary in the white and blue singlet, red ankle band. Second on Jarrell Miller of St. Ed's in the black and yellow singlet, green ankle band. Top two seeds here at 189 pounds made the final. Daly the one seed, Miller the two. Daly ranked number eight in the country at 190 pounds. Wow. Miller, number 11. Daly, a senior as we get stalemated out of that front headlock position. Daly, the senior, committed to the University of Columbia. See, was in on a shot, looking for the reattack was Miller. Miller, just a junior, currently uncommitted. These two were in the same weight. A few weeks back at the Ironman, Daly made the finals. Finishing second to Cade Ziola, while Miller lost to Ziola in the semis, went on to finish fourth. So these two did not meet. Two on one for Miller. Now going fireman, says Daly. He's got him on a hip, looking to pop that head. Now pinching, get, able to get his hip square is Miller. Nice job, now seatbelt wizard position. He's able to come back. Now going drag is Miller. Daly able to keep square. He's got that arm posted up on the hip. Daly just running the corner, trying to circle left. Daly doing a nice job of staying square. That's not easy under there, man. Doing everything he can, rolling through is Daly. Now locked around the leg, trying to pass is Daly. He's got that leg passed. Now Miller getting weight on it, trying to put him on his back. Punch in the half. Daly now getting his hips towards the mat with his back hook. And he's gonna circle out now. Is Miller trying to drop it on the low ankle? Awesome exchanges here. Now go behind off the attack by Miller. So they're going to finish the double leg. They're going to no takedown award. It's short time, and that's going to do it for the first period. <laughs> wow. These two are going at it. Two minutes straight of action. Miller was close to finishing a couple there. Especially that double leg towards the end just runs out of time. Awesome match, or awesome period by these guys. It's Daly's choice to start the second period. He's going to go down. Daly was competing for Bethlehem Catholic last season. Finished sixth. The PIAA AAA state tournament down at 160 pounds, all the way up at 189 now. And has himself up to number eight in the country. Pretty impressive. Miller going to work on top now. Has Daly broken flat. Just five seconds in. Spiral ride with the claw and thigh pry. He's got that back ankle hooked as Miller. Now pinching the elbow, looking to hop his hips over as Daly gets broken down once again. We're gonna get a stoppage for blood, I believe. For Daly. We have blood on Daly now. <laughs> Wyoming Seminary coaches looked at me, asked if what was in that bottle sitting on the table was water. <laughs> I'm not sure, hopefully. <laughs> gonna cut the blood, just gonna clean it up off the mat now. Clean it off the fingers of Daly. As I mentioned earlier, we got third place matches going on on mat three, fifth on mat five, and seventh place on mat seven. All going on simultaneously right now. Along with, our, of course, our championship final going on right here. Up to his feet is Daly now rolling once again, trying to get his hips on top. Miller does a nice job recovering now. In on the double leg, able to bring him back down as they go out of bounds now. Daly busted open again. 
This time his nose really bleeding. You're gonna go on blood time once again for Daly. Daly's gotten a close a couple times hopping his hips over, especially that second time, most recently. He was able to recover. Miller did a nice job hopping his hips back on top. Miller had himself a tight semifinal, was able to get it done late, or excuse me, in overtime. Picked up the takedown one, four to two over Robert Kutzark. Launches ticket to the finals while well, Daly has been pretty dominant the whole tournament. Two falls, a major decision, and a seven to one decision in a semifinal. So he's backing up that number eight ranking. It's really, really impressive. Just development by Daly putting on all that size and jumping levels at the same time. You don't see it very often. Got the whole crew here cleaning up the side of the mat. Looks like we're good to go. We're going to get back to action here with 124 on the clock. Daly still down. Miller's going front trip. Now another roll from Daly. Now dropping back in on the leg. We see a wizard position here. Daly comes up to us. He's going to get his escape finally. High crotch for Miller. Back to having Daly on his hip. This time he's got that bottom leg hooked. Daly locked in the crotch. Miller's going to try to get height, possibly put weight towards the head and shoulders of Daly. Daly's got to be careful over there. He's close to giving a defensive fall. Really flat. Sh shoulders really close to being flat, excuse me. Daly's got to be careful here. Miller close to the fall, but now the shoulder's on Miller's foot. Weird position here. As Miller's just having those hands trapped. Daly still has this lock around the crotch though. Now Miller's got it in a better position. He's finally gonna pick up the takedown. Daly's gonna bail. Miller's gonna take the two to one lead. D Daly busted open again. Man, that was, <laughs> Daly was real close a few times to, not, to giving up that nine control fall. He looked flat momentarily a couple times. I'm really impressed he was able to keep that back hook and his hands locked that entire time and keep moving the hips, switching the hips of Miller over top. Miller stayed persistent on it, was finally able to come up the takedown. <coughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like this nose of Daly's gonna stop bleeding though, so probably gonna have more stoppages to come in this one. Frustrating thing in wrestling once you bust open your nose pretty bad. It's pretty much every time there's any sort of action, it's going to come back bleeding. <laughs> got him cleaned up. We're going to get back to action with 25 seconds to go in the second period. Daly on bottom now. He trails two to one. Up to his seat right away is Daly. Miller. Looking to pick him up. Roll for Daly. Looking to drop down to the ankle is Miller. Daly trying to control that hand. Now dropping down to the ankle once again. Daly trying to kick away. Miller's got to work up. Just six seconds to go. Now Miller coming up to his feet with short time to go. Roll attempt towards the end, but Daly's going to run out of time. Miller gets the ride out. It's his choice to start the third. And he's going to go down. Daly pretty tough in the top position. We see, we'll see what his strategy is heading into this third period, trailing by one point. He's looking towards his coaches, thinking about cutting him right away. He's going to cut Miller to start the third. That'll make it three to one. Daly giving himself a full two minutes to try to get this match tying takedown. 
Miller with the only takedown in this match, but he's had a couple opportunities. Another shot here for Miller. Head to the outside once again. Looks like a chest lock for Daly now getting that foot shelf, that left foot on the outside hip is Miller. He's going to try to swim that right arm to the far leg. Daly just pinching on that chest lock. Trying to keep that shoulder pinched in there now. Miller getting to the double leg, passing the leg is Daly. See if he looks to get height here. Looks like Daly's just going to hold on. Try to get the stalemate. Not too much happening. See if Miller continues to work here. Try to improve on the position, but we're going to get stalemated with just over a minute to go in the third. Looks like Daly might be feeling it a little bit. Those nose plugs don't help with the breathing. Level change there for Miller. Got Daly to bite on it. Both guys down on their knees. Shot from Daly. Re-attack Miller. Not able to get the leg, but now a double leg. Blast through, but Daly able to roll him through. Looks like a cradle locked up for Miller now. They're going to give the takedown. See if Miller looks to take him to his back. Daly's on his butt. Miller now leads 5-1. to one. Miller could possibly go head in the side suicide roll, but looks like he's just going to let the lock go, get on top. Just 30 seconds to go in the third. Now it's sucked back here for Miller. Two one swipes for Miller. Daly trying to hop over. Miller drops down in the leg. Daly locked in the crotch. Possibly going switch cradle here. Miller's just going to give it up. They have not given the reversal or anything yet. I'm not particularly sure why, but now Daly comes back up on top. It's going to make it five to three. But Terrell Miller going to get it done. He's fired up. You see the pump. <laughs> the flex, excuse me. He says, let's go. Jarrell Miller is going to be your 189-pound power eight champion with a 5-3 win over Jake Daly. I'm going to go grab Miller for an interview. Brock Height's going to be tuning in with you guys here in just a moment. Championship finals, 215 pounds, Drew Correa, Wyoming Seminary in the red. He's taking on Austin Johnson of Muncie in the green. Muncie attacking the leg. Uh, it's going to be a Merkel, but the ankle taken to the far hip. Taken in right away. Joe McCara, the official on the call. Wipes the takedown off. Still scoreless, 134 to go in the opening period. Crea Jr., Wyoming Seminary, two-time national prep champion. Ironman champion. He's committed to Michigan. Last year, he picked up a title here over Michael Delegata, a New Jersey state champion. Number three in the country is Correa. Austin Johnson of Muncie, two-time PIAA finalist. He was a runner-up at 285 back in 2022, a champion last year at 215. He also picked up the title here at Powerade at the 215 weight class. So we have two returning Powerade champions battling for the title here.
Straight on shot by Johnson, caught by Correa into a front head. And a st still made will stop the action with 10 seconds to go in the opening period. Big win for Austin Johnson in the semifinals over Aiden Schlett of St. Joseph's Regional. Schlett came into the weekend ranked number 20 in the country. Gonna see Austin Johnson re-enter back into the rankings as he was in, fell out as some guys uh, had some big opportunities at some of the power tournaments in the fall. This is Johnson's first opportunity put up some ranked wins and he did so in the semifinals right away on a Gramby. Cray is gonna hold the ankle in the armpit and draw a stalemate. Could have been a potentially dangerous call as well. 154 to go in period number two. Johnson up to his feet. Roland is going to come up with the reversal. Takes the 2-0 lead over Correa of Wyoming Seminary. Correa right up to his feet. Johnson pushes him away for the easy escape once he got up on the feet. Shot by Cray. Johnson kind of fires back into him. Down to 20 seconds remaining in period number two. Another guy able to find an opening here in the second to get a committed attack off. Correa's choice in the third. right away. Johnson's going to give the escape. Just tells the official neutral. 2-2. Two, two. two minutes to go in regulation. Johnson just going to the collar, pressing forward. Correa just used a hook to throw it up. Drops to a single leg. Had it lifted clear of the mat. Took the free foot of Johnson right out from underneath him. Takedown for Correa, 4-2 the advantage. Looking to put a boot in on the left side. Johnson sealing off on the right. Correa using the right toe, dug in the mat. Trying to drive across, hip, turn the hips of Johnson. He's worked the double boots, has Johnson broken flat on the mat. 109 remaining in the bout. Stalemate 107 to go. Johnson looking for a Gramby off the whistle. Stuffed by Correa. Johnson kicking away to get the escape. Four three the advantage for Correa. 38 seconds remaining. 
in period number three. No stall warnings, no cautions. Don't think that those situations will come into play. Craig using the front head to stuff the position, locks on it. And he's gonna take back-to-back -back Powerade Championships, 4-3 decision for Drew Cray of Wyoming Seminary. He's your champion. We'll get our awards at 189 pounds. Tim Rice will be on the call at 285 for Nicholas Pavlechko of State College taking on Rocco Delegata of St. Joseph Regional. saddled up, half beard and this is like Christmas Day to you guys. Two hundred and eighty-five pound Powerade Finals matchup. We have two nationally ranked wrestlers, Nicholas Pavlechko from State College. He's in the maroon. He's a senior, ranked number ten in the country. He's on on the attack early on the low leg, and he is taking on Rocco 
Delgada. He is a junior from St. Joe's Regional, New Jersey. And Delgada tries to sit the corner. Pavlechko hanging onto the ankle and elevates. Good movement by both heavyweights here as Pavlechko is looking for a near side cradle. And good work by Delgado to continue to wrestle through these positions. As Pavlechko tries to drop down to the leg. Now it's Delgado with the front headlock, decides just to let it go as Riri centers. So some good action here in the first minute of the heavyweight contest. Again, Pavlechko, number 10 in the country, Delgada, ranked number 17. Pavlechko drops in on the ankle, does a nice job of getting his head back to the knee. You saw it slip down at first, gets the head back where he wants to be. He's got to try to get that right arm across the body. And there's Delgada again, trying to sit the corner. He's got 40 seconds to work. Pavlechko has got to hang on to that foot. Good scrambling by both wrestlers. I was going to mention neither one of these guys started at 285 pounds in their career. Pavlechko, I believe he was down at 215, maybe even some 189 his sophomore year, his freshman sophomore year. Sophomore year, he took third in the state of Pennsylvania. You see him dropping down on that ankle again. Followed it up his junior year with a state runner-up finish. He is 88 and 11 on the career, and he is just attacking that right ankle of Delgada. In on the ankle again, we'll see if he can finish this time. Not only does he have to deal with Delgada's defense, he also has to deal with the clock, because we've got less than five seconds to go. And we're gonna end there. It looks like, yes, we end with no control at the end of the first period. So entertaining first period, some good action here by the two big guys. I mentioned some of Pavlechko's state place finishes. 88 and 11 career mark, heading to Indiana after graduation. Delgada, just a junior, finished fourth in New Jersey, down at 175 last year. So has made the big jump up to 285 after wrestling 175 and finishing fourth. Still no change. Still Pavlechko in the control position. So Delgada got a little greedy, was looking for the reversal and ends up with nothing. Gets set back underneath of Pavlechko. So Delgada mentioned going to Cornell next year following his brother Michael Delgada who was a Powerade finalist a year ago. Up at Cornell. Delgada, again, still hasn't gotten a reversal yet. Or his escape. He keeps trying for that reversal. And again, I'll use the term again, just getting a little bit greedy, looking for the reversal, and ends up with nothing. So, minute seven to go in the period. You got to think next time he comes up to his feet, he just tries to kick away and get that one point escape. Pavlechko, big boy though. And he's making Delgada carry that weight. You gotta think there's a significant weight advantage here for Pavlechko. Delgada had himself a good off season this year. Not only put on some pounds to go up to 285, finished fourth out at Fargo, finished third in the, I believe it was the U16 World Team Trials. But that was freestyle, and now he's got to try to find a way to get a point here in folk style by getting up to his feet. Really important point. And it looks like he really wore himself out here at the beginning of the second period with those almost escape, almost reversal situations. Now he's having a hard time coming up out of his base. He's got under 10 seconds, and Pavlechko is going to ride him out for the period. So, man, if you're Delgado, you're going back to watch this match, you definitely... Wish those two scramble situations would have played out differently for him. Was looking for the reversal and ended up with nothing. So still no score here in the third period. He's talking to the coach from St. Joseph Regional before the match, mentioning how tough Delgada is in the top position. See what he wants to do here. See if the plan is to ride him out. 
Give up the escape and go for the takedown. You might not have a choice, though, as have let go. go. Trying, trying to, to isolate the leg and get that inside, inside, inside arm through and see if he can get his right arm through the body. Tries to, tries to make space. Got to be careful of the near side cradle. And there, and there he slips the arm through. He just needs to elevate that foot. And gets the reversal. So have let's go on the board first. 2-0 with the reversal. Right back to the same position he spent the entire second period. With Pavlechko on top, riding hard. Pavlechko, 20 and one on the season. His lone loss came to Stan Samson Stillwell from Missouri. Back at the Ironman tournament, lost three to one. Again, his only loss on the season. Already had one state college Powerade champion this evening, and Asher Cunningham was able to hang on against Alessio Parenton. Parenton almost had a reversal right at the buzzer, but Asher Cunningham able to hang on for the Powerade championship at 160 pounds. And now it's Nicholas Pavlechko taking care of business. and he's gonna ride it out for the 2-0 win. Nicholas Pavlechko, the senior, headed to Indiana next year. He's your 2023 20, Powerade champion. on the mic for our upcoming 107 pound final. We're gonna, we're gonna do our 250 pound awards first and then we will get right to action. Dom Deputy of Chestnut Ridge in the yellow singlet, yellow and blue singlet, red ankle band. He's taking on Cameron Saunce. Saunce of Del Barton in the white and green singlet, green ankle band. We're stuck in short offense here. We're going to get brought up. The stalemate, 120 to go in the first. Top two seeds, 107 pounds. He's held true to this point. Deputy of the top seed, Saunce. The two seed. Deputy, Deputy, ranked number 14, 14 in, the in the country. That sophomore sets up at 113 pounds. pounds. Made the drop made down to 107 for this tournament. As he goes to about 100, 100 off to the single, single, single leg. leg. Looking to go back to the wizard, wizard response. Heavy wizard, your 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 Deputy, Deputy, doing a nice job. Getting his head, his head. Getting good head position. Now, trying to pull him back in bounds. Trying to pull him center. Sons fighting the hands now. Trying to pull his hands off the leg. Now, 
Deputy coming up to his feet, trying to take his time, trip that back leg. He's got 33 seconds to work for the finish. So that's fighting it off hard though, gets back to that wizard once again. Deputy just crowding hips now, he's gonna get the takedown. Go up two to zero, good persistence there by Deputy. Sealing up now is Sonso trying to get wrist control and get out, but Deputy down in the leg over by the edge. Now 360 for Sonso, but Deputy does a nice job following. A lot of action there, Deputy able to come out on top of it, two to zero, with short time to go in the first. And that's gonna do it for period number one. Deputy leads two to zero. Mentioned deputy number 14 up at 113 while Sons, number five down at 106, just a freshman. He was a runner up at the Beast of the East a couple weeks back to number one Joe Bachman. Took out Seamus Reagan, the number six guy in the country in the semifinals, two to one. So Punch his ticket to the finals here. It's his choice to start the second, he's gonna go down. Deputy very strong in the top position, but Zahn's getting hand control. Deputy was fourth at this tournament a year ago. He's in the Aiden Smith, you'll see in the next match, but nice job by Zahn, so that hand control now, trying to get to a shot there, went fake to the shot. Deputy was ready for it with a re-attack. I've noticed Zahn's do this at Beast of the East and at this tournament, he kind of like nods his head as he's wrestling. Maybe just a little tick of his that he's got going on, see so guys have little twitches while they wrestle here and there. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just something I've noticed. Kind of puts the hand out front. And as he goes two on one, tries to pull it off to go to the head outside shot, but doesn't get there. Deputy was also a state runner up in Pennsylvania, double A class last year as a freshman. So he's got this front headlock once again. Sons controlling elbow, driving Deputy towards the line. Deputy circling on his feet back in bounds. Deputy still controlling this elbow. Probably shouldn't see a stalemate here as these guys aren't really doing much. So it's gonna go out of bounds, get himself a restart with 45 to go in the second. Low ankle attempt there for Deputy Zontz, down blocks it. Wrist control for Zontz, trying to snap the head, but two on one for Deputy, it's gonna clear out. Deputy had a bit of a scare earlier in the tournament in his round of 16 yesterday. Came out on top three to two, then won two to zero in his quarter, but it was dominant in his semifinal with a seven to two win. Short time to go here in the second. Looks like these guys are just gonna hang out for the third. As I say that, Deputy kind of faints at a leg. Do Deputy's choice to start the third, he's gonna go down. Sanch just looked to his corner, showed them optional start. So it's probably what we're gonna see here. Yeah, he's gonna show optional start here to start the third. Possibly gonna cut, he's cutting Deputy right into his tie up. He's got his two on one, so he's able to work out of it. He's almost going to a, sort of a key lock here. The referee's gotta keep an eye on that. So he tries to throw it by, drop it in the leg, but he runs out of real estate. 13 seconds into the third period. Deputy now leads three to one. This guy's very wrist happy, he likes to control those wrists, can make it hard to fire off an attack with a guy controlling your wrist. Zonch picking up his hand fight, but Deputy drops it on the leg off the fake. Zonch kicking off the edge. Deputy doing everything he can to try to pull him back in. Fighting the hands now with Zonch in a full split on the side of the mat. Deputy. Being persistent here, trying to pull that leg in. Zontz using his hands to put pressure down on the head of Deputy. Now they're gonna call the stalemate. That's a right call. Good defense there by Zontz. Deputy did a nice job in the attack though. Time in the fake. He's able to drop it on the leg. Zontz got a minute to go here. He's gotta start his sprint now. 
It's an underhook for Deputy, though. Zant's able to clear it. Zant's move, taking ground now, moving forward. As he fires off a single. Now another single leg for Zant. He's got near on far leg. Deputy able to get his leg back. Throw over on the edge. And come back center with 36 seconds to go. So Barton Corner telling Zant's put two or three together. Deputy going straight back. He gets one for Stalling, but Zant gets, gets it on a single leg. Limp arm trying to get that far ankle. Now it's similar position here for Deputy as he's able to fight it off with the wizard and pull him out of bounds. Deputy does have a stall warning now, but a stall call is not going to be enough for Zantz. He's got to pick up a takedown here. 21 seconds to go. Deputy going straight back. Back in on that single leg for Zantz. Back to that shin wizard for Deputy. They're going to go out of bounds. 12 seconds to go. Zant's got to put his foot on the line. Zant's coming forward once again. Deputy going straight back. There's the second warning. That's the point. Make it three to two now. Elbow control here for Zant's. Short time to go. And Deputy's just going to pinch him here in this front headlock. It's going to do it. Dom Deputy fired up. He's your 107 pound Powerade champion. Top seed gets it done. Uh, I'm going to go grab an interview with him. Brock Height will be with you in just a moment for our 114 pound final. Championship finals, 114 pounds. Aiden Smith, Notre Dame Green Pond in the green. He's taking on Landon Sidden of Norwin in the red. Front head position. That's what you're gonna see a lot of this. It's gonna be a matchup of go-behinds. These guys hit twice at the U17 trials. Smith won 12-2 on the front side. Sidden 6-5 in the third place battle at the U17 World Team Trials. Aiden Smith came in ranked number four in the country at 113 pounds. Knocked off number one Paul Kenny in the championship semifinal. Sid, and this is his first time down to 113, 114. He's been up at 120. Currently ranked number 12 in the country up at that weight class. He was third at Beast of the East. Sid in Fargo, 16U champion, and I had mentioned the third place finish at the trials. And U17. Smith, a Cornell commit, has been fourth, third, and first in the PIAA championships. He was third a year ago here at Powerade. In that third place bout, he beat Dominic Deputy. Deputy got the championship side. Smith got the third place bout. We just saw Deputy pick up the title at 107 pounds. Smith getting a front head position. This is where both guys really excel. Smith hits a nice misdirection from here where he'll start running left, kind of club the head, throw it right, and he comes back the other way. Now 
do it for the first. Scoreless into the second. Smith wins the toss. He's going underneath right away. Smith up to Steve Keel in the hands. Sin follows, going to try to bring him back. Got to be careful there as he's sagging his hips not to get into the back of the legs as his feet come clear of the mat. Again, Smith right up to his feet. Sin looking to lift and return. Smith up to his feet. It's time he gets the hands and is away. 135 to go, period number two. Aiden Smith with the 1 0 advantage. thought that Smith's knee pad got turned around through the course of wrestling is actually that way to begin the match. Kind of see a thing that's picking up in popularity. You see Gabe Arnold of Iowa use the backwards knee pad. Sid and not able to finish the leg attack on the boundary line. They're out of bounds. 49 seconds remaining, period number two. Straight on, shot by Smith. They come up into an over-under. Right side hook for both guys. Sidon was trying to pump more in the left. They finally cleared out of the tie entirely. Straight on shot, he's gonna drive through, drive Smith out of bounds. Seven seconds remaining. Smith's big win over Paul Kane in the semifinals. Landon Sidden had a big one as well as he took out number three in the country, Davis Motika of Wyoming Seminary. That was a 3-1 sudden victory for Sidden. Sidden takes the bottom position right away. Smith gives the escape. They're going up on their feet. Missed by Smith, sitting, working on the go behind. Smith able to catch the right elbow. That helped him start to control the position as Sidden started to get an angle early on in the sequence. 
Lots of movement. Pulling on that right elbow, Sin trying to clear it out. Momentarily broke it free. Now Smith has gotten to a head outside single position. Sin just sags and puts Smith to his back for two takedowns, three near fall, 6-1 lead for the freshman out of Norwim. Take down a near fall, propel Sin to the title of 114 pounds. He's the champion. 121 pounds will be coming up after the awards at 107. Tim Rice will have the call for number three, Nate Desmond, versus number eight, Carson Brown. One hundred and twenty-one pound Powerade Finals matchup. Nathan Desmond. He's in the red ankle bands, taking on Carson Brown and the black singlet, singlet of St. Ed. So Carson Brown from St. Ed's, Ohio. Nate Desmond, Wyoming Seminary. Desmond Jr. Brown, just a sophomore.
Desmond tries a fireman's, has the arm. Going to collect the takedown, it looks like. Lock up the low leg cradle. And Brown able to roll through it, so no back points for Desmond, but able to get the opening takedown to go up 2-0. Nathan Desmond, a two-time Pennsylvania State Champion as a freshman and a sophomore for Bethlehem Catholic, made the switch over to the prep school in Wyoming Seminary. He's competing as a junior, trying to win his first prep title this year. Just recently, Nathan Desmond has committed to wrestle for Penn State University. And the fighting Cale Sandersons, or the Nittany Lions, one of those. Nate Desmond, ranked number three in the country. Carson Brown, ranked number eight, top 10 matchup. They've actually already met once this season. As Desmond gets himself in a little bit of trouble, Brown able to almost come around. Referee, I think, wisely waves it off as Desmond able to catch the foot. Again, Desmond still in control and no change. Brown looks up a little frustrated with his corner, but I think that was the right call to be made. See this sometimes, guys getting a little greedy looking for the reversal when really it's probably just better to kick away, give up and get your escape instead of fighting so hard for that reversal and ending up with nothing. So we've got 20 seconds for a ride out on Desmond, drops down to the leg, he's gonna come up high in no hurry to finish. So he's controlling the leg into a double, just needs to be careful not to lock. It's gonna stay in good shape here. Seven seconds left in the period. For Desmond, doesn't wanna give up anything here late. Able to stay in control and takes that 2-0 lead into the second period. As I mentioned, Desmond, a two-time PIAA state champion. Finished second at the 32 tournament, Super 32 tournament this year. Finished third at Ironman and his opponent in the third place match is none other than Carson Brown, who we're seeing here against St. Ed. So this is a rematch of the third place match at the Ironman tournament, which Desmond won three to zero. So it should go without saying, but I'll say it anyways. Carson Brown, fourth place finish at Ironman. He was a New Jersey state champion last year at 113 pounds. Bumped up to the next weight class. Brown was a third place finisher at the Powerade Tournament, career record of 56 and eight. So very talented sophomore from St. Ed's. Nate Desmond awful close to getting his 100th win early on in his junior year. He's currently 97 and four on the season, trying to make win number 98 this evening in the 2023 Powerade Finals. I'm Tim Rice. Excited to be calling the matches here with you tonight. Let's get a good look at both Desmond and Brown. Brock Height along with Mason Lindenmuth taking turns on these finals. Got some great interviews coming up that will be posted live on flowwrestling.org, I'm sure later on this evening. Make sure you check out the Powerade Hub where you can go back and check out all the results, all the matches, see some great interviews, see these finals archived right away as Desmond tries to throw a leg and gets a little careless with it as Brown was able to scoop underneath, but Desmond able to regain control momentarily on top. Brown's got the ankle, Desmond locked on low. 53 seconds left in the second period. And now the referee concerned with the back of Desmond. He's gonna stop that for potentially dangerous. So Desmond takes a look at the corner of Wyoming Seminary. Number three ranked wrestler in the country getting ready to get on top. The number eight ranked wrestler in the country. Again, Brown was the winner 3-0 a few weeks ago, and he's holding on to a 2-0 lead at the moment. Just a reminder to the wrestling fans at home, when the bottom man puts himself on his back to try to escape, you've got to let that settle and make sure the top man is actually controlling him in that position before you get any back points. So. The fans love to yell during a Granby, 
back points, but you are allowed to Granby. Brown up to his feet. Desmond latched on with that claw, pinching with those knees, making it really hard for Brown to be able to come up. 10 seconds left in the period. Brown tries to roll. Desmond stays right on his back. Referee's right on top of that position. If he lifts that arm up, that's going to be legal. Period ends with Desmond on top, taking this 2-0 lead into the third period. So see what Brown decides to do. He's looking at his coach. And they have decided they just want to wrestle from their feet. So the score is now the same as it was at the Ironman tournament, that third place bout. Desmond leading 3-0. But they're not wrestling for third tonight. They're looking for a power aid championship. And in order for Carson Brown to flip this script, he's got to pick up the offense. Saw a similar matchup at 172 with Ryan Burton and Gage Wright. Burton had the win at the Beast of the East. Gage was able to come through this evening, though, earlier tonight and pick up the Power 8 Championship. We'll see if Brown can do the same, but he's going to need two date downs to make it happen, which is tough to do on Desmond. Desmond really tough to score on and really good at turning an opponent's shot into his offense. Tries to throw the leg in. Brown has the closed whizzer. Desmond taking the foot a little bit too far away from the body. Referee's going to stop that for potentially dangerous as we come back to the center with 114 to go in the period. Desmond just one loss on the year. Uh, 18 and 1, I believe, is his record right now. His loss on the year came to Garrett Jordan from Stillwater, Oklahoma. Lost 3 to 2. It's his only blemish on the year. There's a first stall call on Desmond. The referee felt like he wasn't trying to stay on the mound and be aggressive. So a second stall call will be Brown a point and put him within striking distance. So Brown with an outside single. Brown, I mean, sorry, Desmond with that inside, inside, side single. Brown trying to roll through, got himself in the trouble. Desmond has already picked up a two-point takedown. So he is up to five to zero. Hasn't earned any points well to near fall, but really doesn't, doesn't need to. With the five point point thirteen seconds to go in the match. match. And that's gonna that's do gonna it. Do it. Nate Desmond from one from Lake Summit Seminary. It's gonna be your gonna be your two hundred and twenty one pounds. pounds. Gonna wait for our placement matches to finish up, then hit our 114 pound awards, and then we will be back to action up next our 127 pound final here at the Power Raid. Hitting our awards Easton now Hall. for 114 pounds. And seventh place for Altoona, Braden Weaver. Sixth place for Lake Highland from Florida, Liam Davis. And fifth place from St. Edward, Ohio, Ethan Tamar. And fourth place from Wyoming Seminary, David Matcha. Christian Brothers Academy, New Jersey, Paul Kenny. Your runner 
right, guys, now up. 127 pound final. These guys are both ready to wrestle, throwing fakes before the whistle. But 127 pound final, the 2023 Powerade. We got Jax Force of Bishop McCourt in the red gold singlet, red ankle band. He's taking on Eden Cement of Council Rock North in the white and blue singlet, green ankle bands. Forrest, the top seed here, ranked number three in the country, 126 pounds. He goes in for his signature dump. Fireman's knee arm, far leg, really good at both of those. Off elbow control, also really good with an elbow control slide by. It's Cement in on the leg. Off the single leg, head outside now. Locking through the crotches. Forrest, he's really good in these scrambles, locking up Ball and Shane. So you see him fighting those wrists, now looking to kick it through. Cement gets his head to the outside once again though. Forrest now going far ankle, trying to kick that far foot off. Able to get it clear. Now he's backside on a single. Cement diving through, passing the leg. Guys gotta be careful with our knees here. Trying to peel the hands as Forrest get weight on that foot. Cement coming up to his base now. Forrest trying to peel that wrist once again. Get weight on the foot, but Cement passing once again. Splitting that leg straight. We're gonna get stalemated after close to a minute long scramble there. Cement able to fight it off. Shot off the whistle for Cement, he's gonna get Warned for a caution there. Cement currently ranked number 16, up at 132 pounds, making his drop down to 127 for this weekend. He is a junior committed to University of Penn. Not trying to slide by single leg attempt for Cement, but they go out of bounds. Forrest has been dominant this weekend as he typically is. All bonus points to the finals, three technical falls and a fall in the first period in his round of 16 to get to this point. Well, Cement's had a couple close ones, had a fall, a 3-2 decision, a 1-0 decision, and then a 6-2 decision in his semifinal. Forrest moving forward. That elbow control taking Cement towards the edge. Well, that's going to do it for the first period. No score after one. A lot of action though. It's gonna be Cement's choice to start the second period. He's gonna go down, or excuse me, he's gonna defer. Forrest is gonna go down. Forrest, mentioned number three in the country, just a sophomore. He's also number one in the class of 2026 big board. Won this tournament a year ago in the main event against Luke Lilladal. A lot of rolling around is Forrest. Just a one count, but rolling into the Peterson is Forrest. Just gonna pick up the reversal. That looked like a, a two count to me for Cement, but not gonna be awarded. Official said it just a couple one counts. But Forrest gets a reversal. He takes a two to zero lead. Now one of his better positions for Forrest on top. Gets a lot of turns with cross wrist tilts. Ball and chain. They're gonna go out of bounds. Council Rock North coaches not happy. Council Rock North still asking about those near fall points for Cement, but they're not going to award it. We're going to get set here with 126 to go in the second. Forrest was a Super 32 champ this year at 126 pounds. was, I believe, fifth at the Clarion Open, but backside a little bit different at, at the College Opens. He lost the quarters to Marcus Blaze, another high schooler. Granby attempt for Cement, but Forrest able to follow. Forrest was the runner-up at Ironman a couple weeks ago to Luke Lilladal. I believe that makes their series two to two all time between Forrest and Lilladal. We were expecting to see Lilladal here this weekend, but didn't make the trip as he competed in the senior nationals a couple weeks back and actually qualified for the Olympic trials. 
Forrest now at that right side figure four in with just 22 seconds ago in the second period. He's looking for the ride out. Hasn't gotten particularly close to a turn, but now he's working to try to pull this cross body, try to pull that arm back for a bar. Not able to get it. So we go under 10 seconds to go. We'll do it for period number two. Samet's gonna go neutral to start the third period. He felt the heat of Forrest there. And that was, I believe, third last year. The PIAA AAA State Tournament has been third the last two years. A couple of hands to the face there for Cement. I believe, I believe Forrest might have caught a finger to the eye there. Coach is getting fired up. Bishop McCourt, coach is saying you can't just hit him in the face. See these little level changes coming from Cement. Shot for Forrest from space, not able to get there. See if Cement looks to pick up the pace now. Go after the takedown or if he is going to pick his spot later in the period. Seems like he's just trying to pick up the timing here on Forrest. See, nor typically see Forrest attack a lot more. Forrest taking ground. Cement keeping him at bay though with these hands. Not letting Forrest get his hands on him. So we go under a minute to go in the third. Forrest looking for his second power eight title as just a sophomore. Cement looks for the swim outside step. Now a drag attempt here for Forrest as he's chasing the corner. Roll through attempt from Cement. They're gonna award the take, they're gonna cut, take the takedown away actually. As Cement still scrambled, but now Forrest gets him on his back. He's looking for the fall. And there it is, Jax Forrest. Tight match, up with 35 seconds to go in the third. He's able to catch Cement on his back, picks up the fall, and he wins his second Powerade title. Impressive performance there by Forrest. Brock Height will be with you shortly. I'm gonna go catch an interview with Jax Forrest. Championship final, 133 pounds, Nick O'Neill, Malvern Prep in the red, Matthew Botello, Wyoming Seminary in the green. O'Neill comes in number eight in the country, he's a senior for Malvern Prep, committed to the United States Military Academy in West Point. He has been fourth, third, and second at the National Prep Championships, a Powerade champion a year ago. Victorious by fall over Dragon Orini from Wyoming Seminary. 
Aggies taking on Matthew Botello, number 10 in the country, the junior for Wyoming Seminary. Second at the PA Independent State Championships last year. It was a 3-0 decision loss to Matthew O'Neill in that championship final. These guys met for third place at Ironman in early December. A 1-0 decision for O'Neill in that bout. Throw by rear standing. O'Neill's going to lace the leg in on the left side, start attacking the ankle. The hands go down, takedown awarded. Nick O'Neill opens the scoring with just uh, under 30 seconds remaining in period number one. Bar on the right side, one on one on the left. O'Neill's kind of train off back and forth with that left hand. He's going to ride out the win, or the ride out the lead, take a 2-0 lead into period number two. Patel wins the toss. He's going to choose neutral to start the second. Tello missed on the leg attack. Go behind takedown for O'Neal. Right to a figure four leg ride on the right side. Hip and across. Had the hips turn momentarily, but Tello able to get his left hip back down to the mat. Broken flat, far arm on the right. Now O'Neal's transition off. He was starting to attack the right knee. Staying busy with the hands, looking for an opening. But it's the figure four leg right on the left side that's really controlling the position. Stalemate stops the action with 126 to go. Side headlock, back and forth to a lock. And then a stall warning goes against O'Neill on top. He's really transitioning his grip from over the shoulder, trying to get a lock on the waist. Drew the stall call. Tello back up to his feet again. Uh, O'Neill starts with that side headlock, brings it down. He's locked in the crotch here. Botello attacking the left foot, taking that out, making sure O'Neill's not able to go cross body. And a potentially dangerous call will stop the action with 34 to go, period number two. Four leg ride on the left side for O'Neill. Taking the right hand, attacking the ankle. Now he's going fingers, trying to pull it back to get a one-on-one. -on -one. He's actually laced a bar in on the right side. Staying busy with his hands, but it's the figure four leg ride, keeping the left knee of Botello off the mat that is controlling the position. He's 
gonna leave some pressure off of that as the period ends. 4-0 into the third for O'Neal. Looking high turn. He's going to come the whole way through to face for the escape. Tonio extends the lead to 5 0. 140 to go in the belt. Throw by attempt by O'Neill. We saw that early in the bout. Another throw by attempt. This time, O'Neill gets the far hip. Collected, locks around the waist, lifts Botel up, puts him on the mat, takedown to extend it to 7 0, just 10 seconds remaining in the belt. O'Neill checks the clock, chopping on the left side, deep tight waist with the right. Back to back championships for Nick O'Neill here at Powerade. 7 0 decision over Matthew Botello. He's your champion at 133 pounds. After the awards at 127, number one, Bo Bassett will take on number six, Luke Simcox. Tim Rice will be on the call.
39 pound power age final. Bo Bassett from Bishop McCourt. He's in the red. Taking on Luke Simcox from Central Mountain. In the blue singlet. Simcox is senior. Bassett just the sophomore. more. But Bassett is a hair head in favor in the matchup. Bassett, Bassett ranked number, number one country. in the country. Simcox Sim comes in with the ranking of number six. Luke Simcox took out the number four ranked wrestler in the country, and Maddox Shaw from Thomas Jefferson in the semifinal round. Earned his spot here in the finals against Bo Bassett from Bishop McCourt. And this is a good start, start if you're Luke Simcox, and I know you say not much is happening, but that's exactly it. Usually Bo Bassett is up two to three takedowns at this point in the match as Simcox tries to work up the arm on the two and one. He controls Bassett, and really that's what he's trying to do, I'm sure, is slow down this pace if he can. Bo Bassett loves to control that arm. Re stays real short in the armpit, able to come around behind and get that first two-point takedown. He's working to get the wrist tied up of Simcox. Simcox does a nice job working up to his base and coming out to his feet, but you'll notice with Bassett, he loves to stay anchored in that armpit, and sometimes the referees, I'm not saying it happened there, but sometimes firing that shot immediately. As he stays in control of that arm, very much like another well-known wrestler in the state of Pennsylvania, Austin DeSanto, he would hang onto that arm the entire match. Bo Bassett's got a little bit of that offense in him. So we'll finish off the first period here. Four to one in one in favor of Bo Bassett from Bishop, Bishop Bishop Court. Bo Bassett, Bo Bassett has yet to yet lose a BIAA match. He's got a record of 35 and 0, 36 and 0, I now I should say. Has not been able to wrestle in the PIAA postseason yet, but that'll change this year. So he was 18-0 as a freshman, and so far this year he is 17. I'm sorry, he's already 18-0 with that win in the semifinals. So looking to eclipse his wins from a season ago as a sophomore. Bassett, a cadet world champion, two-time Super 32 champion, two-time Ironman champion, and he's your returning Powerade champ. There's not many tournaments this guy has won. I mean, hasn't won. <laughs> He's won the biggest championship. It was called the World Championship, so that's pretty good. Bo Bassett in control here in the second. A couple weeks ago, he did put out a graphic with all his college choices, and I believe he had all but three or four universities, so hasn't narrowed down anything yet, as he is just a sophomore. Simcox, originally committed to University of Pennsylvania. He's made that switch, though, and now recently committed to go wrestle at the University of North Carolina. Bassett tries to work out through the back. Simcock able to hang on to the leg for now. And Bassett's just going to try to step on his chest and pin him, I think. So Bassett trying to put some weight on that foot. Simcock still scrambling. He's got to try to roll through and now build up and get those feet on the mat. Referee still holding. There's two for Bassett on the takedown with 20 seconds left in the period. And he's looking for some back points. Simcox able to wrestle through the position. Luke Simcox, Pennsylvania State Champion a year ago as a junior. Freshman and sophomore, he had fifth place finishes. Again, in the state of Pennsylvania, two divisions, AA and AAA. Simcox wrestles for Central Mountain in the Central in the AAA division. So a fifth, a fifth, and then a state championship last year for Simcox. Trying to end his scholastic career in March with another state title before heading to UNC. Bassett wrestling for Bishop McCourt. He'll be in the AA smaller school division, Pennsylvania. And oddly enough, 
say probably the two strongest teams in the state of Pennsylvania will be in the AA division, and that's in Faith Christian and Bishop McCourt. They're going to be battling it out for the team race in the individual championships. Simcox gets a leg in on Bassett. Simcox out of position here. Bassett going to climb up on the arm. Able to work out and get the reversal. So it goes up 8-2. to two. Take a quick peek at the team scores. See Wyoming Seminary. It's going to be your team champions out in front by nearly 50 points on St. Ed's of Ohio as Bassett continues to pressure in on Simcox as we go out of bounds. So Seminary is going to win the thing. St. Ed's in second place with 184 and a half. Malvern Prep with 173. St. Joe's Regional in fourth place, 158 points. And Bishop McCourt in fifth currently with 154. Actually tied for fifth. But you would imagine they'll get some more points here with Bo Bassett. Our final matchup of the evening is between Pearson Manville from State College and Jack Consiglio from Malvern Prep. That's a number one versus number two in the country. Definitely want to stick around for that one as Mason Lindenmuth will be on the call. I'm Tim Rice, and it's been a great weekend here at Powerade Wrestling. Another just phenomenal tournament. As Bassett in control on top with a 10-3 lead. Bo Bassett made it look easy here this weekend. I believe this will be his first non-bonus point victory, though. But a 10-3 win ain't bad. So Bo Bassett from Bishop McCourt, he's going to take the title at 139 pounds. Bo Bassett, your Powerade champion. All right, guys, about to head into our main event of the evening. Our final matchup here, the 2023 Powerade. Going through awards right now for 133 pounds. And we'll get back to action here in just a moment. All right, guys, main event of the evening, 145 pound final. We got a one versus two in the country here. Pearson Manville at State College in the silver and maroon singlet, red ankle band, number one in the country at 144 pounds. He's taking on Jack Consiglio of Malvern Prep in the silver and blue singlet, green ankle band, number two in the country. These two have actually hit twice in the last about month and a half. Manville won at the surge, 10 to zero in the finals. And then a couple weeks ago at the Ironman, Manville won, I believe, 7-3 the final. Manville takes Consiglio out of bounds with a two-on-one. 128 to go in the first. See if Consiglio's able to bring a different game plan this time. Third time getting his hands on Manville so far this year. Manville back to this two-on-one. Both these guys, former Powerade champions. Consiglio back in 2020. His freshman year, while Manville two years ago in 2021. Now Manville digging his hooks. This is where he's really good. He looks to throw the underhooks and go behind. Consiglio gets out of bounds. Consiglio looks to his corner for some advice. On him, I'm trying to just prevent Manville from getting to these control ties. Obviously, easier said than done. But Manville right back to it, punches that hook, pulling him into underhook on one side, elbow control on the other. Consiglio was a beast of the East champion two weeks ago as well. Now Manville getting in on the high crotch, switches off to single leg. Wizard here for Consiglio. Looking to go 
possibly a little Jonesy there as he was grabbing the wrist, Consiglio, but they run out of real estate with 35 to go in the first. State C College corner wanting a stall warning on Consiglio as they're saying Manville took him out three times already this period. Manville taking over that number one spot in the country back at who's number one in September with a win over Colin Rath. That was a rematch of a state final from a year ago that Rath actually won. Manville was a state champion in 2022, runner-up last year to Rath, but got his revenge at who's number one and has defended that number one ranking since. Manville, the heavy collar tie snap, looking to circle corner. Consiglio controlling the elbow. Short time to go in the first period, and that's going to do it here for period number, period number one. We're scoreless. Pretty controlled period there for Manville. No points to show for it, but definitely wore on Consiglio a little bit there with those control ties. Manville's choice to start the second period. He's going to go down. Manville, a senior, committed to wrestle at Arizona State next year while Consiglio headed to Stanford. Consiglio taking his time, getting set on the left side. Consiglio pretty tough in the top position. Manville getting to crab ride position here, trying to fight the feet. Consiglio trying to get his elbow deep on this half. Now Manville isolating that bottom foot. Now grabbing behind the knee, getting his hip scooted out. Consiglio able to follow though, Manville up to his feet. Manville grabbing the back of the knees. Consiglio runs him out of bounds. He's gotta be careful doing that. I imagine the next one, he tries that again, it's gonna be a stall warning. Has not been warned at this point. 1.30 to go in the second period. Now back to this crab ride position. Consiglio bringing him back with a half. Now throws the left side leg in. Manville trying to swim out for the leg slip. It's gonna pick up his, his escape right into his underhook. Now switching off to a two-on-one. Consiglio able to clear. Consiglio can get anything going on his feet. Looks like Manville's taking it out of him a little bit. He's controlling that wrist. As soon as Consiglio ties up, Manville just goes straight to that two-on-one. Consiglio thinks about trying a shot from space possibly, but Manville obviously with very good defense of his own. Now two on one on the other side for Manville. Consiglio pushes out. 30 to go here in the second. It will be Consiglio's choice to start the third. And Consiglio, I'm Thinking about firing here late in the second, if nothing else, to keep the official off him for a stall warning. As Manville has been controlling much of the action on the feet. Just been getting Consiglio to react. And now Manville moving forward once again with the hook. Consiglio gets his elbow down with short time to go in the second. Consiglio's choice to start the third. He's going to go down. This was a position Manville controlled in pretty well in that Ironman final, I know for sure. I believe I called that match. I think so. Um, Manville was able to ride hard. See if Consiglio has an answer. Here we go. Start of the third period of the main event of the night. Also going to have a quick plug in for the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic. That'll be live on Flow Wrestling March 30th, Easter weekend. Make sure to tune in to the historic Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic. Four point stand, trying to work up to his feet as Consiglio Manville immediately going with the mat return. Gets him broken down flat. Now Manville throwing in the figure four on the right side. Manville really good with those mat returns. Now working on that left hand and wrist of Consiglio. Consiglio completely flattened out with 1.10 to go in the third. Consiglio's got to try to get that knee down to the mat, clear that right leg. 
We're going to get a stalemate here. Big restart for Consiglio. See if he has a different strategy here off the whistle as we get restarted with 58 seconds to go. And he'll get set up on the right side. Now switches one side, then the other. Granby attempt for Consiglio. Manville catches a half. Now Consiglio up to his feet. Another big mount return. Granby, though, for Consiglio, not able to get his hips clear. They're going to go out of bounds. That's the kind of action Consiglio needs to create. He wanted, wants to get out. 46 to go. They call his corner telling Manville to stop that first move of Consiglio off the whistle. He goes tight waist ankle, now elevates, shelves that leg, excuse me, the foot on his left hip. Switching one side, then the other, just bringing a lot of pressure down on Consiglio. The big breakdown, now it slips in that figure four, just a short boot in actually. Another roll for Consiglio. Gonna get himself another restart with 26 on the clock. You gotta imagine Manville's probably gonna go back to that tight waist ankle off the whistle. Try to break Consiglio flat until Consiglio's strategies rolling Granby and trying to get those hips clear. Back to the tight waist ankle. Consiglio gets up to his feet for a second, but Manville breaks him back down. Back to quad pod for Consiglio. Manville going with another mat return. Rolling is Consiglio. Half. Consiglio gets his hips free. Still a front headlock for Manville. Just nine seconds to go. Consiglio's going to clear and get the escape. With seven seconds on the clock, they go out of bounds. It's going to tie it to one. State college coaches are going to talk. Well, officials are going to talk about it first. Officials are going to talk about it. It looks like the lock was broken before they went out of bounds. This is a huge call in this matchup. Could <laughs> make the difference. Official's still talking about it. They're going to take the escape away for Consiglio. Going to keep it 1-0 to zero for Manville. I, I personally thought the lock of the front headlock broke for Manville before they went out of bounds. You can hear the crowd not really happy about it, but just seven seconds to go in the third nonetheless. Manville looking for the full period ride out in the win. Another roll attempt for Consiglio looking to kick away. Manville drops it on the leg, short time. There's a stall warning with one second to go. Consiglia's corner wanting to talk to the official. They're saying Consiglio cleared and was away before Manville was able to get back in on the leg. The official saying Consiglio never faced him. So no escape awarded to Consiglio. They're just a stall warning on Manville. Just one second on the clock. Consiglio is going to need a miracle here with just a second on the clock. Manville goes tight waist ankle, and that's going to do it. Manville gets his third win in a row over Jack Consiglio. And he keeps his number one ranking in the country, this time one to zero. Pearson Manville, your 2023 Powerade champion, 145 pounds. Great matchup, great set of finals there. Awesome weekend here at Powerade. Love coming to this tournament. Thank you guys for tuning in. As I mentioned, tune into the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic live on Flow Wrestling, March 30th, Easter weekend. But thank you guys for tuning in. For Flow Wrestling, I'm Mason Lindenmuth. See you guys next time.